Hello! Welcome to another episode of Mega Manga Mondays. We are talking about the incredibly exciting Bruto Chapter 69. Nice. And uh, it, it came out on uh, 420 of this year, so it's just, this This is a trolley chapter. Uh, but uh, <laughs> maybe not trolley is not the word for it. But anyway, uh, I am Jason Hahn. I am a writer for Screen Rant. I love writing video game news, and I'm also a huge manga fan. Naruto is my favorite series, and uh, we're, we're here to talk about the sequel series, Chapter 69. I can't do this all by myself, or that'd probably be a more of a boring podcast so i got a couple other buddies from screen rant with me who also love talking about some baruto uh, so i'll go ahead and let them introduce themselves uh todd you want to go first man yeah i'll start um yeah i'm todd petrella i write for screen rant in the comics department um i grew up with naruto naruto has been my thing ever since i was a wee lad <laughs> uh, and i'm very happy now i can like get paid to write and work and talk about naruto so that's really cool yeah right dreams do come true we 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 followed our ninja way till till we met our goals <laughs> no. how about how amen about we... Bayo. Dr. Bayo, man <laughs> that becomes like the new like big lebowski dude thing like dot to bio man dot to bio i i would i would love that anyway steven hey yeah so uh yeah, my name's Steven. I've uh, been working for well, writing the in the comic section for Screen Rant for a little over a year now. Um, mostly write about manga, but also a little other stuff on the side, like Sonic. But I'm very excited to talk about Baruto today. Uh, yeah, I'm like I felt like last chapter was just a lot of like breathing and setup. But then as soon as we got those panels of Ida uh, and Code kind of creeping into the town, I was like, oh, th things are about to kick off almost immediately again. And uh, I f still feel like there was a good amount of breathing and pacing going on in this chapter. But I, I just the things that came off right off the top of my head as i was reading i was just really happy that we're getting more time with ida's powers and how they affect people differently which is yeah. kind of a big thing that people were worried about because so far all we really knew is her powers just essentially uh not mesmerize she's she's very mesmerizing yes but uh almost <laughs> almost in a form of hypnotist where people just instantly want to do whatever she wants them to do they just instantly fall in love with her essentially and i love that we got that uh difference here of it only seems to seduce the more simple-minded people other people have other effects say like uh shikimaru uh and his uh, shadow position shadow possession jitsu uh he can use it on her but he just because it's not something that instantly hurts somebody um so it's just all these like extra rules and regulations on this overpowered ability is stuff that we really needed. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, oh. no, I, I was I'm sorry. I burped a little bit. I was going to say, but uh, yeah, that, 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 that was something I needed to get off my chest right away. What, but what, how about you guys? I mean, at least, I mean, going off exactly what you were saying about uh, Shikimaro, uh, you know, how he didn't, you know, fall in love with her. Like some other ninjas have, it it actually it made me think for uh, you know a post that I'm going to be um, that article that'll be going up soon hopefully, um, but just taking this more from a, a romance level. Um, so so Shikimaru, I mean, if he had you know fallen in love uh, with Aida like everyone else has, then that would create a lot of um, you know possible headaches for him, headaches for him in the future. You know, especially since you know he's married to uh, Tamari. Yeah. So it like it and it made me think that. You know, since he doesn't, he, he's not experiencing that, you know, everything's fine for him in that regard. But then I was thinking it would be an amazing way to kind of, you know, breathe life into um, Naruto's marriage uh, with Hinata. Just because, you know, Hinata's, you know, kind of been thrown to the side for a while um, in, in this manga. You know, like one of my favorite things about Naruto actually was the, you know, how... Uh, Hinata and Naruto, their little interactions and how she would always get flustered around him. Now it's been kind of lost. I mean, understandably, since the focus isn't on them anymore, but it was like what drew me to Naruto initially actually was that um, romance between them. And it would be, 
absolutely incredible, I think, if Naruto ended up being, uh, you know, if if and when he meets Aida, if he, you know, ends up falling in love with her through that, I mean, that could cause him, you know, to, you know, undergo some crazy grief and having to uh, <laughs> try and reconnect with Hinata or, oh, I, I don't know, it's just, it's just my, yeah. my way of hopefully trying to bring it back. Because it's like, <laughs> like, maybe even like, thinking back on like their past together like no no fight this thing i don't know that's just something that i that that's a level of depth i would not expect the series to get into (laughs) with that sort of like complexity in the relationship also i can only imagine the anger of the fanboys of people being like man you just had to you had to nerf naruto's fighting ability but now you're nerfing his mental ability too he can't even be a good (laughs) husband now guys come on like as as interesting as it could be for sure I too would love it if Hinata was able to play any sort of pivotal role. But yeah. <laughs> at, at, as I started this podcast by saying I am a huge Naruto fan, it's my favorite series. However, it's not perfect. And one thing it's always consistently not been great at, or something it's always consistently done, is putting characters at the sidelines. Uh, it just they've they've introduced so many great characters that you want to see more of them and of course see how their presence can complicate a certain storyline and make it you know even more compelling i absolutely think that would make it more compelling if naruto you know fell in love with ida and then hinata had to like somehow regain naruto's love but that would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not sure if that's uh, if that's gonna go down, but um, yeah, that I, would I, be cool. But like, like we're saying, like the focus isn't on them anymore. So I, I wonder how much time they'd actually like put into developing that. Yeah, and I'm sure like whenever they're all sitting, you know, in a boardroom or however the editors and the writers decide where they're gonna take a huge story like this next, I, I'm sure they wrote down uh, i would like to think that that is this organized and thought out but i would like to think that okay we have this person who have these this insane powers where people fall in love with them what characters could we introduce to them that would be the create the most compelling story or help them get to where they want in the plot um and that's kind of one thing i loved about this chapter too is we've established that line of communication outside of this room so and Shikimaru is the absolute best person to be in this room. Like, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm really, really hoping that they don't do... Shikimaru is one of my favorite characters consistently throughout the entire series. And I'm really hoping that they don't do him dirty. And uh, he just comes up with this awesome plan. And then, oh, no, I didn't think about that. Because, I mean, he was there when Code pulled Damien out. So he knows that they have, like, a reflect ability. Um and he was even able to communicate outside and be like, all right, Naruto, Sasuke, don't just rush in because that might be a really bad idea. Um, so I'm, I'm almost wondering if like Ida's powers, if it's something, you know, if it's chakra or if it's nano machines, it's just whenever you get a certain distance close enough to her, then you're affected. So I almost wonder if like uh, Sasuke and Naruto, if they were to coat themselves in chakra, sort of like when Madara use the infinite Sukiyomi and they all hit under Sasano. So they are the only ones on the planet that weren't affected. I almost wonder if Sasuke finally, something I've wanted him to do for a long time could condense Sasano into being like, uh, just small armor that just kind of goes around him. But that way it might be able to negate, uh, eat abilities. Do you think, um, shadow clones would have any effect? Like if Naruto went in with a Shadow Oh, that's clone. interesting. Oh, I like that. Ooh, I mean, that is good. Uh, well, from everything huh. we know about Shadow Clones, when he dispels them, he retains all the knowledge and information. Yes. But we don't know if that correlates to like uh, physical sickness or something. Say if like one Shadow Clone got poisoned, if he dispelled it, would it come back to Naruto? I don't think so i don't know for sure though i don't think so because then if you if you look at it like that like anytime a shadow clone would get killed wouldn't naruto like feel that pain or have the same wound yeah yeah i think you're right so yeah the the shadow clones would be a brilliant tactic for that um and that's another thing about the series inconsistency too is everyone can do shadow clones it's just 
no 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 one else really does <laughs> them when you know the plot would be incredibly useful or substitution why aren't they all just substituting out of there right now but uh, that that's here that's here or there uh what was some major stuff in the chapter that stood out for you todd um i guess what was some well, of your the, the thing i was yeah the biggest thing i was looking at um because i'm i'm very big on this theory that amato and ada are like father and daughter um like yeah. i was talking about last time um and at the start of the chapter like the way chapter 68 ended versus the way this one began um like you know how amato said he had a daughter that died 12 years ago this chapter opens up immediately with uh, amato going ada you're alive but then we know her ability doesn't work on family members so then when uh he's explaining how it works to shikamaru he's like you and even me are being inf- affected by it so then it's like what's the relationship here then well we do know that yeah, I mean, that's kind of like my big takeaway with the chapter i mean Sorry, didn't Steve. Amato, no didn't know motto like he's the one who modified her aida like wasn't wasn't uh, he might have been yeah i yeah, think I he was... i think he is the creator of all these androids yeah. um so but I, I really like your theory too, and I still think it's probable. Um, just because of like the clever choice of words that he's using, but I mm-hmm. think the Ida, which is again like I was looking up her name on something else, and they spelled it A D A, and now yeah, I'm the official yeah, translation. And is is it like a Zolo Zoro sort of situation? I don't know. Um, I, I feel like the the theory could still be in there. Um, I mean, from everything we've been told, yeah, her powers don't work on uh, other family members, but that could just mean that they were talking about the, like, the infatuation part. I mean, it might still affect family members just in a different way. Uh, or it could just be really gross. That's true. It could be the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Another thing I was thinking of, like, if it was, I was thinking, like, if it, Amado could maybe, like, it was, he's not actually, or Ada's not actually, like, his daughter, maybe it's, like, when he was, like, creating her, for lack of a better uh, phrasing, um, maybe, like, for whatever reason, he took a liking to her as, like, a daughter, like, he was, like, he took, like, a fatherly role for her, so maybe that's, like, what he meant by my daughter died 12 years ago. Yeah, that is entirely possible. Uh, I, I think that's likely. I think it could be even something along the lines of like she is not fully his daughter, but maybe it's part of his daughter because we haven't really had the androids fully explained in Naruto Boruto yet. But as androids and cyborgs usually go, especially the difference between. Uh, I'm pulling up my un, my invisible glasses right now because I'm about to drop some nerd knowledge. But cyborgs oh. are robots only. Androids are like a combination of uh, bio uh, bio material and robotics. So like the robots in Dragon Ball Z are actually androids uh, because they were at one point real people, uh, just upgraded with robot parts. From my understanding. Uh, we haven't Which like... it should be. It has to be. It, it, it would be so much better if that were the case. Like, I've been going under the assumption that is what it is. Yeah. Because that would be incredible. And awesome. Yeah, that, that's that's my thinking, too, as well. Yeah. I mean, it would be so intense, though, too. Like, like if he... I really... Like, I never even thought about it, but it would be so cool if he was her father. Because then it's like a father, you know turning his daughter into an android like that's insane like <laughs> like that's some twisted stuff and they, that would be kind of incredible if that were the case but like, and i i think know. it's all just some... going into like amato is just such a question mark of a character like he's yeah. clearly helped us a lot in this journey to get to this point but he's still every chance that they get to show that he has some bigger plan. He's, he, he's got something going on in the back of his head. So I, I, I would love it. And it would make a hundred percent sense if that's the thing that's in the back of his head is, you know, he, his daughter is here and alive. She's just, especially with his surprise of like, Oh, you're alive. Like I wasn't planning on waking you up anytime soon, or maybe she's unfinished. Like he he needed to make some adjustments before trying to wake her up, but yeah, his daughter could have been horribly hurt or died, and this is like his way of bringing her back. 
yeah just the more the more you yeah. think about it the yeah. the more it's the more yeah. plausible it really is uh but I was... it's like another thing like if um if she's like if they are related like maybe amato he doesn't want to reveal that he has any relationship to her um he doesn't want to reveal that to konoha because you know then it could be like oh then what are your real intentions here yeah uh well and there's always that like she probably doesn't know about it too like I, I, I almost yeah. think it's either you're missing the memories or you forgot or something like that. But we've definitely established that, and this was, I think, the last chapter, that uh, memories are unlocked, uh, restric- uh, restrictions can be unlocked just with the utterance of a single word. So maybe Ida has something similar, too. Uh, maybe as soon as, like, Amato says something then those memories can be unlocked and she would be like, oh my God, I am your daughter. Um, but I really liked the idea, especially near the end of this chapter. Interesting. That's a, that could happen, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, that's. I feel like that was the whole reason they established it last time, uh, that uh, Amato just needs to say one word to unlock Code's abilities. Uh, it, it's not like, okay, well, we have to do a six-hour you know, surgery to implant the to lift the restrictions or anything it's like no he just has to say a word and it's like okay well that's obviously going to happen then if you're going to write it to be that easy <laughs> so uh i think code is definitely going to get his limiters uh unlocked and i think the end of this chapter kind of gave the hint and also the show that uh ada's not you know totally evil like she she just she wants a boyfriend she she wants a she wants some cuddles from kawaki some kawaki she wants cuddles. original love <laughs> Yeah, is that original or regular? Uh, ordinary? Well, one of the three. Yeah, yeah. or uh, ordinary, regularly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Was that a translation in here? I I, I missed that one. But she's yeah, just I like Kawaki is what she's saying. Uh, regain the power. Situation change. I don't know, I'm reading through it real quick. But what I think is going to happen next, not to skip ahead to where we think this is going next, all right, all ahead, but. Um, especially with Shikimaru kind of coming up with ideas. It's like, okay, well, I could just take you to Kawaki. We don't need all this. <laughs> like, Which is what we want. I, I'm excited for that. <laughs> yeah, I'm just really afraid. It's kind of me going back to like, I hope they don't do Shikimaru dirty here because Code could absolutely just like kill Shikimaru right now and be like, no, nope, this is the plan. This is what we're doing. And, <laughs> but then... I don't know. It just Shikimaru's kind of figured out if I can just like convince this Ada lady to you know to do something, then she's the one that holds all the cards right now because even she has control of code as far as we know still. Um, but mm-hmm. we also need uh, Damon to show up. I, I almost wonder if they're going to figure out some way to actually attack Ada, and then Damon's going to show up, and then. Shikimaru could be like, oh, you know, that's been my plan all along. Because I, I just need, I, I need all the cards laid out so we know what we're fighting against right here. Um, well, that's right. And uh, speaking of Damon, I remember I forgot who it was on, in the comic channel, but someone did an awesome um, uh, post or article about how Damon is would be like the perfect um, villain for One Punch Man. <laughs> like dude, when you just think about it, it's like, oh, that is perfect. <laughs> Yeah, just to reflect. I think that was on. I think that was Francesco. Was that what it was? Yeah. I was like, "That's awesome." Oh, that would be cool. I did really enjoy. I think this was the theory you came up with last uh, week, Todd, or last discussion. Todd was uh, if Hidon uh, somehow became prevalent again. Um, it, it might I, uh, be... I, wrote, I did write an article about that. <laughs> yeah, because his powers would kind of be very useful for, especially uh, Damon, like. I wonder if they used a reflect while, yeah, if the abilities just kept reflecting back and forth, back and forth, because... <laughs> yeah, exactly. That'd be, like, that'd be insane. Like, if anything, it would trap both of them in a loop. A loop. Theoretically. Of, a loop of pain. That's what I called my high yeah. school black metal band. Uh, <laughs> I mean... This is a lot of setup and it was a lot of it, it kind of answered a lot of questions that I was really wanting. I just needed more details on Ida's power because it's just very interesting to me. Um, but I was I wasn't sure if they would be affecting Delta because 
Again, we're, we're not 100% sure on the physiology of the androids. And so we're. But that was an adorable part. Uh, it was so. It's actually the panel I'm on right now is. <laughs> so adorable. <laughs> it's so ador- like Delta looking at Ada and she's just like, oh my God, she's so cute. Like, oh. <laughs> I agree, Delta. Um, <laughs> but it was just. I, I, I really like how technical things are getting. And that's kind of what I think we were talking about last chapter. We are like, where do we want it to go? We just, we really want it to get back to like intelligent ninja fighting rather than just what's the next biggest attack. And oh, you can't use this because everything just cancels out. Like, all right, well, that's kind of boring. Like, <laughs> but we're getting to like the nitty gritty of how all the powers work and having to come up with like an intelligent strategy to deal with it. And that's, that's what I like in my Naruto. I, I, I like the, uh, I, I like the overwhelming odds against the big cool power and then figuring out a smart way to do it rather than just like, okay, well, I guess I just need more chakra than you do right now. But uh, what was some other stuff about this chapter that uh, stuck out for you guys? Yeah, for for me at least, and um, I wrote an article on this hasn't go, come out yet, but um, a big moment was when um, Kawaki wakes up, and um, you know he he tells Naruto, you know what are you, what, what does he say exactly? You're gonna condemn me for killing Boruto, and that was an incredible moment because uh, uh, Sumiri uh, Sum- Sumire um, was still in the room at that time, yeah. which is pretty incredible because you know we've been trying like uh the whole village you know has been against um you know kawaki living there and now there's an official leak you know of you know finding out that baruto has is hiding the fact that kawaki killed baruto and that could really turn against them like it could almost even like overthrow him as hokage just because you know he's supposed to be protecting this village and if news gets out that he's been harboring this kid that who everyone doesn't trust already, like, and he's a killer, that could really, you know, blow up in his face. And, and it's really crazy that um, uh, Sumire finds out because she, you know, we, we know we learned in previous arcs, you know, that she has a thing for Baruto. Yeah. And even though, and, you know, Baruto, you know, he was the one that, you know, saved her when the whole thing with her father was going on. And he still trusted her and had faith that she could become a better person. So now she, you know, one, she is, you know, already has feelings for him. And two, she already, you know, appreciates everything that he did for her. So now, like, even though Naruto is Baruto's father, she's probably going to, you know, do something with this information, knowing that this guy, Kawaki, killed Baruto. And... That could be really troubling for Naruto going forward, oh, and, I, and, I think, yeah. and I think that's perfect because, like, we want, like, I know we're trying to, you know, go to Baruto and all these other characters, but like, we're reading this because it's a Naruto story, and it would be incredible, like, you know, tackling like his whole his dream has been to become Hokage, and now there's a, you know, a, a like a potential that it could be taken away from him for like taking care of this kid who's basically gone through the same problems as he has. So, I mean, that's incredible, and I'm excited to where that will be. I didn't even think about all that. That's very, like, it's Um, very um, perceptive. Yeah, I mean, that's the whole reason that they had to have her in the room still when he says that, because we've got to have a way for other people to find out, because it's obviously, like, a very tensionist uh, topic, which I get and I understand. I hate it, though. I kind of hate it because even before the Naruto series started and our established understanding of what ninjas do and stuff like that. I mean, it's been very normal actually for teammates to die and them to have to even kill their teammates. Uh, Kakashi killed Rin, um, spoilers. Um, and, uh, (laughs) like there's a lot of instances where you go back and think about it. It's like, there's been plenty of times where they've had to, kill their comrades or do something that is you know not necessarily considered good guy behavior but that's it's kind of all normal stuff in the ninja world baby like i as <laughs> as much as we wanted the ninja the end of naruto to really be 
and, and I mean the end of Ship It In and stuff, the the end of the actual first series, um, we, we wanted to believe that, you know, all, all of world's conflicts have been resolved because we all work together to take down the global threat. And now Naruto's going to be Hokage. He's the most respected ninja. That doesn't necessarily mean everyone is suddenly happy and cool and not going to suspect each other of things. But this this kind of... <clears throat> This, this is really just going towards that, where it's like, okay, well, uh, we, we just need that to be a bad thing that happened so then we can move the plot forward. But really, it like shouldn't matter. Like I'm on Bruto's side on this, where he's just like, well, I told Kawaki to do that. Oh, it yeah. was the best oh, exactly. option, and I'm okay. So things actually worked out pretty well. So so I, I, yeah. I don't even know why, like, I mean, Kawaki, I guess, needed to get that out because he's, has he been asleep since they finished the battle against Code? Yeah. And, okay. So, yeah, so, he, so he didn't know that Baruto survived. That's why like, yeah. he was like, oh, he's alive? Oh, shit. Right. So I, I'm, I'm on the, I'm on the level-headed side where I'm just like, okay, so no one needs to be upset, but, <laughs> but obviously it's going to play into a bigger thing, um, I almost wonder if it's going to be something along the lines of uh, exile uh, some people from Konoha. Um, is it going to be something as big as Naruto losing his seat as Hokage? I doubt it. Um, but it, it, I know that all it depends on what the situation is going to look like after Code and Ida finish whatever they're doing, because I think it's all leading up to Code getting his restraint, his his restraining order lifted uh his restrictions uh taken off and i don't see him just being like okay cool well i'm just gonna go peace out uh you you guys (laughs) you guys enjoy konoha (laughs) like if if he gets his powers my biggest issue with code is he's been very underwhelming like they talked Mm -hmm. him up as being stronger than uh ishin and all this stuff well once his limiters get taken off they're gonna have to prove how scary he is um so i'm, I'm really hoping that you know there, there there could not be a konoha after he gets his restrictions lifted and we don't necessarily have a bring everyone back to life jitsu uh in a pocket right now so yeah i, I think this is all there's there's quite a few th- seeds planted in this chapter and uh i'm excited to see them grow yeah i just want to see more of aida <laughs> yeah i'm really curious if she can even fight like because she's giving kind of giving off those gara vibes when he was first well, introduced of just like no one's even hurt me before well she doesn't see well she she he, she has articulated that she doesn't like fighting that she thinks it's gross or whatever like she doesn't want to get you know involved in that like i remember when when, when code I, I forgot what part but you know code was fighting and she's like oh gross type of thing like oh you're fighting why do you guys think she has some sort of um ocular jutsu I don't know. I mean, her eyes are drawn in a very unique kind of way, but I don't know. Ocular jitsu is just feel so Naruto at this point. Bruto <laughs> just seems to yeah. be like, okay. Oh, you have an ocular jitsu. That's cool. I have like six scientific implants and also I'm trained in five bloodlines. Like, it just feels so like small at this point that I'm not sure if they'd be like, oh, and she has an ocular jitsu. Um, I mean, but that, that's just my opinion. I, I still think she could shoot yeah. lasers out of her eyes if she wanted to, uh, but we'll, we'll see. But yeah, that's about all I can think, all the things that really s- jumped out at me while I was reading this chapter. Um, I did really like Naruto kind of, you know, having a level-headed conversation with Kawaki. Um, and even Shikimaru, I remember last chapter, it's like, are you going to be able to do that with him after you watched him kill your boy? And, that was uh, dope. I yeah. like that kind of thing. It, it just kind of, it was kind of the Naruto I was hoping that, you know, that, that it's it's the it's the Naruto I've grown up with. He has the, the, the level-headed ability to be able to communicate with somebody and have the conversation he needs to have. And I'm glad that they, they're keeping to that because especially during that fight with Code, there was a few moments with Naruto where I was just like, okay, this doesn't feel like the same dude that I read 700 chapters about. It's, this feels like, you know, a version of this guy that we just need, 
we need him to do something to keep the plot going. Um, and this felt like more of a return to Naruto for me. But that's just me. <laughs> glad to hear that. That's a good thing, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, I think that's a good thing, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so next chapter, I think uh, Sasuke, Baruto know about this. Uh, Naruto's been contacted. Well, they're, they're going to be holding him back, though. Like, if, if um, Ashikamaru's um, plan goes into effect. Yeah, well, it kind of depend on what Code's reaction to, hey, hey, Ida, I, I, I have a different idea. <laughs> it's um, like, how about we don't do that? <laughs> yeah, and I, I don't think Code's reaction is going to be good. I, I, I think he's going to shut Shikimaru up, but yeah, or, or his priority might be centered on Amando, and he's just like, you can go ahead and go talk to Kawaki. I'm just, I'm going to concentrate on getting Amando to unlock my powers. I mean, I don't know. I, the I'm very actually... last panel, Code doesn't look too happy. No, he's like, what? huh? And then it ends. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, um, I never got this feeling before until, you know, Shikamaru made that proposition. But I, it, it actually created the possibility that she could actually become a reformed hero at, at this point like i know it's unlikely but it was the first time i popped in my head it's like well th- she's only doing this to be with Ka- uh, kawaki like this is that's her only that, that that's her only drive and this is a like a possibility of her just just dropping code and like, which would be kind of boring if it happened but it's <laughs> but well, like it i think or, right. or, 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 or i mean it, it could like make code the big bad again like like you were saying you know he's been kind of diminished in all of this and if her you know um defecting that would put all the all the cards back in code's hands and he can go crazy well yeah and if you think about it she's got her clairvoyance abilities too so she knows like she she knows everything that's gone on in konoha and she knows that you know these people are trustworthy like i i, I think that she gets this offer and is seriously going to consider it because she's just like, yeah, honestly, I win if that happens. So, <laughs> however, I think code has gotten everything he needs out of Ida at this point. Hasn't he? What? So has I, he? I, I, I think so. So, I mean, his main goal was just to have his powers unlocked. And, uh, I, I, I this could absolutely be the turning point mm. where he, uh, he, he he could turn on her, but then again, I don't know what that would look like because I don't know how how her powers are still affecting him. Because yeah, when they were yeah. first introduced, like it was definitely a, okay. I'm I have a crush on this girl. All of a sudden, this is weird. Um, <laughs> what am I feeling right now? Yeah, exactly. I've never had these <laughs> feelings before. Um, <laughs> but I mean, they've spent enough time together that maybe Code has figured out a way to negate that i don't know um but yeah that's 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 kind of where i'm putting my money i think code is going to react very poorly uh to this proposition um and he's (laughs) like how that's worded (laughs) (laughs) he's either going to (laughs) attack everybody or just let them go do that and then he's going to get amando to lift the restriction and then it's going to be a big battle in konoha but can't really do a big battle in Konoha without a bunch of innocent people dying. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't know. Uh, but I, I, I think that the relationship between Ida and code is about to disintegrate because I, I, I think that they have fulfilled everything that they needed to do for each other. And, and also too, like what, um, Aida, like uh, uh, putting the ball on her court, she was the one that said to code that once I no longer need you, I will get rid of you. Yeah. So, so, I mean, like, if there is a chance that she can see Kawaki and talk with him and connect with him or and mate with him, as she keeps on talking about. <laughs> um, like, I um, missed that like, word. Did she just fall and say, I, I can't wait to mate with Kawaki? Well, 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 well she says, like, <laughs> you'll be my mate. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? yeah. Um, Sorry, like, that, was my, uh, that was in my head. Sorry. <laughs> like uh i mean so if that's the case i mean she could just turn on code then i mean maybe that's one of the reasons 
why I mean Code obviously doesn't want this, but I mean he that might be in the back of his mind as well. It's like, wait, if you if you're saying that, then that means you don't need me anymore, and then that means you're gonna try and get rid of me. You never know. Yeah, which could mean I mean Code might get his powers unlocked, and then it is all of Konoha and Ida and Damon versus Code. If it's everyone about to be against this new crazy forum that they keep teasing with code. Uh, I think that could be pretty cool. And that would mean all of the interesting theories we've thought on what it would be like if this Konoha person fought Damon are going to go out the window. <laughs> because I mean, it'll never happen because they'll instantly just switch sides. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, how about, uh, how about you, Todd? Where, what do you think is going to happen? Where, where, where's this going next? I'm I'm thinking like honestly I can't see Kawaki like with what we've seen of Kawaki up to this point I can't see him being interested yeah. in something like a romance yeah so I wonder if like Ada does turn against Code she gets to talk to Kawaki finds out like Kawaki's not interested uh, is she gonna go back the being with Code or yeah being allied with Code and being against the Hidden Leaf. Uh, I don't, I'm, yeah, I mean that was on the back of my mind too. Like, yeah, what? Like, because Kawaki probably wouldn't, you know, want to have anything to do with her. And if that's the case, I mean, would that mean she goes to Baruto because he's right. the other one who is? And then that mean, but then that will piss off Code because now he need, no, that would make Code happy because he want he originally wanted you know to do all these bad things to Kawaki, but he couldn't because Aida had chosen him. So if if Kawaki shuts um uh, down. aida down then that would bring up the opening of the using thing, as, a, as a sacrifice the thing about ida though is she's pers- consistently shown that she's not the type to give up like, yeah or care yeah, <laughs> or or care. Care. yeah. yeah. i think yeah. i think if uh, kawaki turns her down instantly i think she's just going to go Force into it. go into rage mode or yeah so, something to not give up on that but I, then then maybe kawaki could use that to his advantage and be like look i'm not gonna i'll go on a date with you if you help us defeat code or something like that oh that yeah that's pretty cool yeah because <laughs> at this point kawaki is the only one that could possibly control ida who controls everybody around her so that oh man that could be interesting and i mean we especially with the the lingering flashback they just chose to start the whole series with. <laughs> uh, I think yeah, it'd be pretty right. interesting if Kawaki A ends up being the bad guy, which from this point, it's still, it, we still need a lot of really bad things to happen for Kawaki to get to the point where he levels the entire field and, uh, you know, has and fights Baruto to the death on the rubble of Konoha. But it would be pretty interesting if Kawaki ends up being the bad guy and he has Ida and Damon on his side. You never uh, know. Yeah, I, I still don't know yeah, how we're going to get there. Like right. it's, yeah. I have no idea. It could go any number of ways. I think <laughs> it's like, I don't know how to like feel about Konoha getting destroyed again because I feel like that's a been there, done there moment. Oh, so many times. And yeah, anybody who's yeah. played any of the games, you're just like, okay, how many times are you going to destroy Konoha? Oh, it's, I got a bingo. Yeah. <laughs> Konoha is destroyed. I got a bingo. Um, it's like the pitch meeting. All right, so get this. I'm thinking we destroy Konoha again. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think people will get bored of it? Just like, no, it's epic and it means serious things. Um, but uh, yeah, a- a- any other theories on... Uh, where we're going next or uh we could probably go ahead and start wrapping this up. um i don't have any theories really i just thought one thing that was interesting and it goes back to that flashback we saw at the very beginning of the series oh you there? of like his oh. outfit uh that he that he has in that sh- in that scene he um he got the headband from sasuke oh kawaki has sasuke's headband no, uh, Boruto got Sasuke's oh, headband. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we totally got that scene in this. And it was actually very heartwarming. And it felt like very legit, uh, like, Boruto's excitement and stuff. Like, I, I, I almost feel like he's... For being one of the most bland uh, main characters in Shonen, uh, in my opinion, I am not a huge Boruto fan. I have a hard time 
sympathizing with a lot of his struggles um because no, i'm with you there um but i feel like this was one of those good moments because he was he was you know being the good kid and it's like hey i'll give this back to you just just like my dad did here here's this headband buddy and uh sasuke being the cool uncle like no nah, man you go ahead and keep it and there's just like i i felt excitement with baruto there like and uh even even in this scene, I'm looking at the panel right now where Baruto's like excited. He's like, "Thanks, old man." Like, Baruto just looks such like a kid, especially in that panel. Like, he's just a little excited kid. And as soon as I saw that, it instantly had me think back to that scene where the series starts, where he's not a kid. Like, they're both a, like Naruto. It seems like they're like Naruto's age at the end of Shippuden almost like they're 15 16 heading in toward heading towards 20s um and so it was just kind of a weird choice that they drew him to look like a child so much in these couple panels uh because it just makes you instantly think of like okay well he's he's wearing the scarred headband uh i mean this is part kind of part one of his get up for the final fight so it's it, it it resonated pretty well, and it just made me feel like we still have a long way to go uh, before we get to that uh, that that fight that they teased. But he's getting I, dressed to kill. Yeah, and <laughs> the big old smile to do it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm I'm pretty curious to see. I, I don't think, uh, especially because Bruto is you know kind of full Okotsuki now. So as or. Mm -hmm. I, I i can never say I, i'm sure i'm not saying that word properly but his interaction with ida i'm very hyped about because yeah as we said like him and kawaki are the only two that can properly have a real relationship with ida um but she has previously said like yeah i don't know i don't really care so much about him but i almost think it's going to be one of those things where she's like crazy about uh kawaki but then she, I think she's going to slowly fall for Naruto or no, not Naruto, Baruto. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I got disconnected. I, um, I missed all of that. Oh man. It was earth shattering, uh, super intelligent things. Uh, I, I bet it was. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding, man. I was just talking about how uh, I think that uh, Baruto getting that headband felt really cool and kind of the first He's, he's kind of dressing up for that big final fight. And it's still just, especially the way that they drew him in those panels, it just made him look so childlike. And it just made me feel that we still are just so far away from that first big fight. Or the, the fight that we were teased of Kawaki and him. Um, it just kind, of, yeah. just kind of made me feel like we're still really far away from that. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It's exciting to see uh, that. I also thought like just going back to like the headband like you were saying like how he's excited and how he's a kid or he looks like an excited kid and it's like a heartwarming moment i also feel like it goes back to like the very very beginning of naruto where like naruto became a ninja and he got his headband from aruka yeah and that itself was a very heartwarming moment yeah that's that's going all the way back to chapter one yep. um but yeah, uh, I'm also just very curious on uh, Baruto's interaction with Ida because we've we've learned that Kawaki and him are the only ones that can uh, can have a solid relationship with her. So I almost see like Kawaki turning her down and then her not giving up on her uh, quest to earn Kawaki's love. And I think over time she could fall, you know, start to fall for Baruto. But that's if she stays in the picture. But that's like, I mean, that makes it so much sense. I mean, that, like, I, I know I talked about it last time, but I still think it's so fascinating that, you know, her, you know, her dream is to have that real relationship. And Baruto is the only one who can actually give it to her 100% because he is 100% um, Akatsuki. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's like, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's just like one of those things. It's just interesting that she is kind of just you know, shooting herself in the foot by choosing Kawaki, even though, you know, it just goes like love that isn't, shouldn't be is, you know, type of thing. Um, yeah. She wants to, it, it's just, it's, yeah. I mean, it's just, yeah. It's just so interesting that it's like the one thing that could help her. She's going against for the, as you said, the bad boy, it, it's just, it just makes a very compelling image. 
Yeah, and it's just like further, you know, we're just crazy about learning more about her powers. Like, if she does side with Konoha, and then she starts to start to like Bruto, and then Sarada is like, oh no, you you can't be doing that. But then Sarada likes Ida, so then Sarada is like, hey, okay, Ida, you can do what you want. Like, yeah, that, that, that's cool. Like, <laughs> that's it's almost be they could write a whole series on how Ida's powers would affect this town, and I'd be very curious on how that soap opera would play out. <laughs> but I don't think yeah, they're going to spend the time in Bruto to do all that. Yeah, I'm just that just reminded me like I forgot the name of the manga, but it's basically like Naruto, but all romance and no fighting. And I don't know, just what you were talking about reminded me of it. It's amazing, but I forgot the name. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I think that'll about wrap up this uh, episode of Mega Manga Mondays, Bruto Chapter 69. Nice. And uh, yeah, uh, I am the Han. I, uh, I am the Hanzi on my channel, Hanzi and Friends. Uh, we play video games and comedic Let's Plays and streams on YouTube. Check that out. Also, check out our other episodes of Mega Manga Mondays because uh, we do all kinds of serious discussions for like One Piece, Bruto, Dragon Ball Super all kinds of stuff check it out wherever you listen to your podcasts and um yeah how about uh how about you steven any, uh, any recommendations or stuff you'd like to plug uh no recommendations i mean like i said before excited about the the new black clover even though the latest news is sad um i mean the the only plug is that my uh interview with araki is up which is cool oh, um, awesome yeah, yeah, you so, uh, recently got the chance to talk to the director of Attack on Titan and uh, yeah. Um, yeah, with some other stuff that you guys talked about. Oh, no, I, I didn't have that much time with him. Um, like I, uh, um, But it was we, we could only talk about his new film, um, Bubble, that's coming out on Netflix in a few days. Um, but like, no, like most of my questions were kind of like tying into his to his earlier stuff. So I made sure to talk about attack on Titan and death. Note, just because this latest uh, movie kind of like, like, like we see in the trailers, not to give anything away in the movie, but like you can see in the trailers that there's like still some of that same elements of, you know, post-apocalyptic worlds that he's interested in, but he's kind of moving away, um, you know, into a more peaceful type of world, but with you know, still holding on to the vestiges of post-apocalyptic so it's interesting. Very cool. All right. Well, uh, definitely check that out on Screen Rant. Um, as we've said, we are writers, both writers on Screen Rant. Um, I think we lost Todd through connection, but I, I'm sure he would agree. Uh, check out Screen Rant for comics news, uh, video game news, and movie news. And uh, you'll find all kinds of cool and insightful articles on there. But uh, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Mega Manga Monday. Uh, check us out online and other episodes and look forward to future content. But uh, I think that'll about do it for this uh, episode. Thanks for your time and uh, chatting with us, Stephen. Yep, yep. And uh, yeah, check us out. And uh, oh, uh, Todd just sent me a message. Uh, yeah, uh, check him out on Twitter and send him any angry messages about things that he said. Um, at uh, Todd the Writer twenty one at Twitter, or mm. at Todd, you you know Twitter English, Twitter speak all that. Uh, but yeah, f find him on there and uh, check out other stuff. And I look forward to talking to you guys in the future. Awesome, yeah, same. Peace. All right, I know I missed the end there, but <laughs> oh no, I, I just got your Twitter in there. <laughs> That's Todd, everybody. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> I yeah, use... so yeah, everybody, you can find me, like Jason just said, Todd the Writer 21. Find me on Twitter. And yeah, that was a great discussion. Absolutely, guys. Thanks a lot, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.